Hello, welcome to the All or Not podcast. Our official sponsors are KR Couriers and Transport Limited. Let's talk about Ket. I mean, I don't really know much about Ket. I've never had that experience with it. But there's been a few reports recently on the news and in the papers about a bad batch of Ket flying about Liverpool. Didn't know you can get a good batch. But this batch is put three young kids in hospital. So I went and done a little bit of research and I spoke to a few people who were in recovery in the mid-20s, young, 25, a couple of young girls as well. You know, their stories are horrific. You know, they've, um, they've got long-term and short-term memory loss, perforated bladders, they're at risk of wearing, you know, colostomy bags for the rest of their life. They're incontinent. They can't stop pissing all the time. Some of them even shit themselves. These are the consequences of, of this drug cat. Now, I was talking to someone this morning about it and I was thinking, Can I'd rather be on the fucking gear. You know, with heroin, at least you're not, you know it, it's got a shelf life. You know where you stand with that. Crack, takes you to your knees. It'll take you to an early grave. It'll strip everything from you. Herman was like, you could, you know, I know it's sad to say, but kind of kept you a little bit grounded and balanced. The withdrawal, you know, that's another story. So each and every drug has its, you know, consequences. Even cannabis. No drug's a good drug. In my eyes. That's why I stay abstinent. You know, there's times when I think I'd love to have a fucking baby. I'd love to go and um, just have a spliff. Even some mushies. Get on the trips. Try a little bit of DMT. These thoughts still go around my head. <laughs> I still think. You know. It, it, it'll be attractive to. To get wasted. But it's not. It doesn't. It's. There's always a price to pay, whether it's physically or mentally or spiritually. You know, you're in that decay of some sort. And if I don't plug into this program of recovery, then I'm fucked. And I, I, the only way I can explain it is like, you know, if you plug a fridge in, you know, and switch it on, and then open the door, it's, you know, the light stays on and everything's fresh in there. You've got all your vegetables, your milk, everything's... You know, it stays fresh. You know, so it stays switched on. You know, you switch it off and go back to that fridge. You know, each day. Things inside still look okay. The vegetables still look fresh. The milk is fresh. A few more days, they start to deteriorate. It goes off the milk. You know, the vegetables go a little bit brown, a bit mushy. And that's what it's like with recovery. If I don't plug in and switch on, then I'll start going a little bit stale. And I've realised that recently, that's why I've had to reinvest in recovery and go to meetings. And I've listened to these stories about these kids on the cat. And I think, fucking hell, they're horrible. They are horrific. You know, these are like, within three years of using this, this cat, they're, they're, in them, they're in that situation where it's like fucking life-threatening. Wow, that's why I keep going to meetings, you know, listening to other people's stories. It keeps me fucking grounded. It keeps me coming back. And if I can reach out and help someone and, you know, offer them a bit of guidance and show them that there's a way out, then, you know, I'm being a service. Anyway, just thought I'd share that little upload. Thanks for listening. Take care. Stay safe.